introduction video for the guidelines to prepare a full project uh, proposal. My name is Johan van der Heide and I am working for the ITA office. In this presentation we are going to explain you how to enhance the PO sections to uh, prepare an FPP and also to understand the PO evaluation. Also we will go into more detail how to optimize your national consortia towards an FPP and we will conclude this presentation by uh, explaining how you how to complete your PO into an FPP. For enhancing the PO sections, we're going back to the example which we have already used for the PO uh, and which is focusing on the market value chain. So imagine that you want to prepare a project uh, regarding uh, dealing with a secure mobile video streaming service provider. And in this market value chain, you will have several markets which you will touch upon. So first of all, of course, you will have a cloud provider. And this cloud provider will provide you with the cloud infrastructure which you need for your uh, video service provider. You will also need encryption, so you, you will have need to have an encryption provider which will provide you with the, service, with the security overlay in your application. You will also need a 4G or an LT network provider which will on first hand provide you with a service. Uh, and will be a selling point for your application, but will in return also provide you with the network and the bandwidth. Based on that and around this core, you will always have end users. And these end users will need to adapt to use your system. And on the other hand, you will have regulations uh, which will result in two constraints, which can be the local government uh, putting constraints on your network connectivity, but also uh, European rules or other rules which will put constraints on your total uh, on the total picture. It's very important, and for the PO even more important, that you explain uh, how these market value chains are covered in your project proposal. Going from market to the technology value chain, you will have more or less the same approach. If you're going back to this uh, streaming service provider with cloud compression, um, you will the, your end techni technology will be an app. So we will have mobile apps as a technology, and which is uh, and this streaming service provider will be a source for your mobile mobile uh, app. On the other hand, this cloud high performance computing platform will be used to source your streaming provider with cloud compression. So you will have different technologies and different uh, yeah, technologies are available. For instance, encryption, but also uh, compression. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, compression will be an important technology to, to reduce the amount of traffic towards your mobile user. Uh, this requires an algorithm and this algorithm can use models and frameworks uh, and that can be your own defined model or framework or even an existing model or framework which you have optimized for this goal. Uh, you will also require some simulation of course to test your models and your to test your algorithm and to test the, uh, the success and the, uh, and the compression of your algorithm and also uh, if your, uh, it will help you also to optimize this. You might even want to use artificial, in artificial intelligence uh, as an element to, to optimize your compression or to, um, uh, yeah, to optimize your compression algorithm. And of course you, you want to use profiling, even real-time profiling to see the performance of your algorithm. And that can an, again be an input parameter for your platform. So all these technologies will might and can be used in your project. And it's very important that you explain how this all these technologies are covered in your project. Another element which is important to do is a study of the market. And uh, elements in this market analysis are, of course, what's the current market situation? And what are expected trends in a market? And what are your comp competitor stra strategies? Um, that might be and that you need to, to check and to, to, to uh, investigate threats of new entrants or threats or, or of substitutes uh, or even opportunities in the market. And what's very important, your business expectations of the project. On the other hand, you will have innovation. And innovation means what are your existing products? What's already on the market? Uh, uh, what is current state of the art? Or what are the expected trends in technology? It's all part of the innovation and uh, the ITA living roadmap can act as an important source for all these kind of uh, data and information. And it's 
uh, for everyone available on the ITR community website. Um, you will need to do some upstream research in the field to see what is the current innovation or current state of the art. Also, you can check the technology disruptions or new concepts which are currently in introduced or available on the market. Or combine these two, uh, to combine technologies and into new technologies. It's important that your consortium market access will fully cover all these elements and you need to think global. Think outside your country or even outside Europe. Um, we would like to expect, it's important that, that, are important, uh, that are clear objectives and outputs. An example of these are, for instance, a novel algorithm can be a clear output or even a software architecture or an inf improvement of a current or already existing architecture. Another clear uh, objective and output can be an open source library uh, or a contribution to an existing uh, can, it can be a contribution to an existing open source library or a newly developed open source library. A more sophisticated or a more touchable uh, objective can be a demonstrator or even a prototype. Or you can contribute to current standards or create new standards even and so on. Uh, of course, the, what's important for these objectives and outputs is that they are tangible and realistic and, and ambitious. If you want to quantify the criteria, uh, if you take a look at the quantification and the criteria for that, uh, that can be, for instance, the consumption, uh, the consumption of power uh, or, or uh, GPU, uh, can be the consumption of memory or the uh, reduction of the consumption of memory or, or the same for heat. Um, it can be the frame rate of your application or of your system, is or even the hardware dependency of this frame rate. Um, how is your algorithm performing? Is it possible to to detect the user on um, on a camera field, a camera screen, or not? Um, it can be, uh, for instance, performance. On is your your on scalability? How scalable is your uh, application? Or what is the maturity of your application? And so on. Taking all these elements are important to update, and um, the result of all this data will be a merged proposal. And this merged proposal is based on the template you already used for the PO, and will be extended to form an FPP. So again, we will merge project key data inside the uh, your annex document, which you upload to the website, resulting in a merged proposal, which will then be the final full project proposal. Um, the system has not changed, so that means that you still are uh, still very important to use the in in uh, built-in styles and uh, don't, in for instance, for body text or other elements, don't uh, use only these, and that will result in a very nicely uh, uh, formatted FPP document, which will be sent to the reviewers. You will find these green boxes will be used to explain what we expect in every uh, chapter and you can use the, the f text under the uh, text there to write your own text. Uh, please, if you want to use tables, use the built-in table styles where you have lots of options to make uh, banded columns, column colored headers and so on. Um, as you can see in this example over here. Your PO has been evaluated by the steering group and by the PAs and uh, to understand this evaluation, uh, we present you the possible styles, uh, we uh, possible evaluation statuses. So there are six of them, uh, varying from no status set, uh, where the PA has not given an evaluation, uh, and then a good chances for funding until almost no chances for funding. But it's important to keep in mind that the colors are not the same meaning in, in various countries. And when you have, even when you have a positive feedback, you might expect strong competition from other projects in the same country. On the other hand, when you have a negative feedback, it might be that you need to consider to leave the project, to make the project even, uh, to, to help the project further. And nothing is definitive, but significant changes are required to improve the evaluation. An important to, to stress again here is chapter 4, which is an auto-generated section which is called the rationale for public funding. The data from chapter 4 is taken from the website, but it's very important that you read the regulations written in this orange box on the P FP 
HTTP annex and that you reflect them in the text on the website. Uh, as, as again, this is an auto-generated section, so all data should be written in the website for every country. You can find them on our website per project in the country tab. It might also be necessary that you optimize your national consortia to cover the value chain as explained in the beginning of this video. Um, you need to only maintain partners which have really an added value to the project and have an actual chance for funding. Or, you, or these partners need to be ready to contribute uh, on self-funding basis, that's also an option. And you need seriously to consider the feedback on your PO, so read what the the public authorities have written in your country and try and uh, reflect these changes uh, into your PFPP. It's important to involve end users here, so like cities for smart city projects or tool vendors, because these partners, these end users will give you a huge differentiating factor. They bring credibility to business pro uh, prospects, of course. And you can should focus on a strong business use case to avoid scattering, and scattering means that you target on too many objectives. Then you lose focus, and uh, you that and you lose, and then you should focus on um, the part where you can have impact. So how do you really complete in practice the PO to an FPP? So. Uh, as I explained earlier, in the PO phase, we expect to have a convincing story and you need to push innovation for the actual market uh, impact. And you need to explain the concept and the consortium relevance. And we need to present clear objectives, of course. For the FPP, we re require more detail. So first of all, you need to refine the PO uh, based on the evaluation feedback. And also we ask you to write a, a convincing realization plan. So every work package should be described in detail in your FPP. So going back to the website now, after the call has opened, the FPP phase has opened, you will see on the right hand side in the checklist that a new block has appeared, which is called uh, Feedback on Project Outline. The steering group and the PAs have given their feedback and it's your now the task of the project to give feedback on to give the project feedback on this feedback of the of the reviewers and that can be done via the management tab so if you go to the management tab uh, first of all you will notice that the office has uploaded an fpp annex document which is your po docu original po document which you have uploaded uh, in the end of the po phase Th this has been downloaded and converted by the office into an fpp document so all the relevant chapters have been added and re-uploaded to the system and also sent by you by the, to the project leader by email. So we can use this document as a starting document for your FPP phase. Furthermore, there is a new block which is called PO feedback and you are asked to give your feedback as, uh, as explained before to the feedback of the reviewers. If you open this page, you will see that it's built in two blocks. The first block is called the steering group evaluation, which is split in mandatory and recommended improvements. And you should give your feedback to this, cons uh, to this steering group evaluation. And of course, all these improvements should be reflected also in the written document. The second part of this page is the public authority evaluation, where every country has given their evaluation and a comment. And of course, again here, it's important that these comments are reflected in the PO to in the FPP. And you can write your feedback on this evaluation to by ed using the edit button in the bottom of the page. Taking a look to the FPP and the changes from PO to FPP, as said before, you will see in the work package descriptions that there are new chapters per work package where you need to explain which partner is active in which uh, work package and what will be done in each work package. So we clearly ask you a more detailed project overview. There is also an Annex B edit, which is a new Annex, which is auto-generated, and here all the feedback of the consortium will be given, uh, so the feedback of, of the steering group and the PA will be given, together with the feedback of the consortium. And this concludes, uh, this will end up in a full project proposal where all information is merged into one single document. This also concludes your this video. 
and um, of course if you have any further questions do not hesitate to contact our office via email or phone and would like to thank you for your attention for this video